Up next, a building in Bethesda is given a new life and a summer concert by a band with a history. Stay tuned. Welcome to Paths to the Present. I'm your host, Gail Street. Today's show focuses on things that endure. We'll start with a visit to what many refer to as the old vacuum cleaner repair shop in Bethesda. It was the inspiration for a sleekly modern renovation on old Georgetown Road. Then we'll hear the music of the Browningsville Cornet Band, the oldest continuously performing community band in the area. But first, let's do the history quiz. Who is this person? A Sunday school teacher for 34 years, this woman was devoted to helping her community. Among many other things, she was elected to the Montgomery County Council in 1950 and re-elected two more times. In 1959, she became that group's first woman president. Want a further hint? Her name is mentioned in this episode. So listen closely, and I'll give you the answer at the end of the show. Our success story today takes us to downtown Bethesda, where an old building received more than just a facelift. It was transformed into a fresh new piece of architecture while still remembering its past. At the corner of Old Georgetown Road and Wilson Lane in Bethesda stands the Perry Point Building. This pale green glass and steel structure looks very 21st century. So it's surprising to discover that this was a remodel. And the original building looked like this. Architect Michael Belial explains what drew him in. My architectural practice was right around the corner and I would walk by the building almost every day. And one day I walked by and I looked hard at the building and I thought, hmm, this is a really unique piece of architecture. It's very dilapidated but it had a real simple, honest expression uh, harking probably back to early 30s, industrial, modern type of look. Built in the 20s, the original building was a one-story masonry structure with a wood frame roof. It wasn't designated historic, but it has a history. Bill Offutt, who has written about Bethesda's past, says that at different times in its life, this building housed a food market, a church, and a used car dealership. But he says it had its happiest days during World War II when it was the Bethesda USO. 100 or more matrons and about 100 high school girls volunteered to come entertain sailors and Marines. And they had dancing twice a week, and bingo and checkers and letter writing and uh, they ran a room registry out of that place. Uh, Stella Warner was in charge of that as a matter of fact for the relatives of sailors and marines who were stationed at the Navy Hospital. Many people today refer to it as the old vacuum cleaner repair shop because that's the business that was there most recently. Its closure left an impression on the surrounding community. Yes, it closed and either through sickness or uh, <laughs> I don't know what, the owner disappeared and people's vacuum cleaners were trapped in the store for a good while. It took them, I don't know, several years to get all that straightened out. Blyle purchased the building in 2009. At that point, it was in bad shape. When we finally gained possession of the building, and went inside and looked around. There was a big hole in the roof in the rear, water was coming in. But I had already done a lot of preliminary design. I knew what I was going to do with the building and basically the metaphor I like to use is that of a chrysalis. We preserved the masonry shell and then erected a new steel, concrete and glass structure from within inside that old masonry shell. It cost a lot of extra money and effort to achieve this vision. Because we removed the old roof, which was a wood frame roof. We removed the existing concrete slab. We constructed a new steel frame for the whole building with concrete floors. And we had to underpin the existing masonry. In fact, many people would ask me, why did you preserve the shell? 
Um, I would say it was mostly an artistic decision on my part. And like a butterfly emerging, the Perry Point building was born. Today it's a three-story structure that glistens by day and shines at night. Gallery Neptune is housed on the second floor. Owner Elise Harrison appreciates this building's roots. It was easy to fall in love with the space. It's triangular shape uh, that it's jutting out into an intersection. It's just, it was different. And um, the idea of landing in this building was a very intriguing idea. Inspired by the past, Michael Belisle envisioned the future. Today, the Perry Point building draws praise from many, especially the man who studied its history. Uh, I couldn't have looked at that uh, one-story red brick little place where they fixed vacuum cleaners and sold accessories and imagine what he did with it. Uh, it's a gem. We don't have very many gems in Bethesda. It's a beauty. It's something to be proud of. From the late 1800s until fairly recently, most people living in Montgomery County worked the land. Usually it was a family affair, with everyone working hard day and night to cultivate their product. There was little free time or opportunities for vacations, and when they did get a break, farmers and their families usually had to make their own fun. In the summertime, one popular pastime was listening to or playing in the community band. In the 1900s, communities from Potomac to Clarksburg had their own band. Each was a little different, but the aim was the same, to provide entertainment at church picnics, volunteer firemen's parades, and carnivals. Today, only one local band has played together continuously since its founding. In 1884, William A. Walker started the Browningsville Cornet Band when he was only 17. Back then, the town of Browningsville consisted of a few stores, a grocery, as well as a mill. Now more than 125 years later, that same band still plays together, although the rehearsals now take place in Frederick County. A descendant of William Walker, Merlin Barnes, plays the glockenspiel. She joined the band when she was 12 years old. The son of the founder of the band, Dwight Walker, came to my home and they had a glockenspiel that no one was playing and he knew I played piano. So he suggested that or asked if I would be interested in playing it. I um, was very interested because my parents, followed, my dad started playing the band when he was like 12 or 13 years old. So we all, I've always gone to band engagements and um, would sit in front of the band and just, you know, enjoy it so much, so I was excited. I was very timid at first because you, you hit the bells, you know, you hear that all over, so you want the note to be right. <laughs> Made up entirely of volunteers, the Browningsville Cornet Band is a nonprofit organization. The modest fees collected for performances go towards uniforms and instrument maintenance. Today, the musicians wear matching shirts. But in years past, they sported full uniforms. The styles changed over the years. The 1920s, 40s, 50s, 80s. David Bowman joined the band in 1959. I can remember when I first joined, there's a couple weeks where you might have three or four band engagements in one week. And that was due to uh, the fire companies, the volunteer fire department. And every fire department in the area would have a parade and a carnival. So sometimes we would have a parade at one, maybe one county, and then there's also a carnival going on in another county. And we'd be invited to all of them, and we would try to go to all of them. <laughs> 
While there are fewer opportunities to perform nowadays, the band stays busy. Amanda McCurry is the current director. We rehearse um, once a week from January through May. We'll take, we'll take a week off for Easter. Um, and then we play all summer, usually anywhere from two to six shows a month during the summer. Things like this, church picnics. Um, we have some church picnics we've been playing for over 100 years at the same church. Um, family reunions, there's families that are related to the original members. Uh, community parades, we were just at New Windsor Parade last week. But they're a good group. It's a, it's a mix of all sorts of different skill levels, uh, which is a challenge to work with, but they're, they're fun. They're a fun group. The band's bylaws called for the cultivation of musical talent in the community. It's a way for parents to pass on the love of music to their children. John Campbell has been playing the saxophone with the band since the early 60s. I had three kids played in the in the band with us. It was sort of our family activity. Two daughters and a son that played uh, flute and clarinet. And at this particular performance, John's daughter returned to play along. We get members in of all calipers. There's no auditions, anything like that. That's Bob Vernier. He plays the trumpet and is the current band president. My kids were in it for a while, carried the banner when we marched in parades. That was another big thing. They had uh, an actual honor guard and uh, banner carriers. And at one time, I understand even like uh, majorettes or something with the band, <laughs> yeah, baton twirlers. It, it was much larger in the past uh, when it was like the only thing going within the community. From the beginning, Merlin's great-great-grandfather had one goal for the band. His goal, I know, was for the band to last, to play 100 years, which we did reach that goal. And we're well into our, going into our second 100 years. I certainly hope that it continues. We have so many talented members now and uh, who enjoy music and playing together that um, I, I really see a good future there. Walt Frazier, former director and president, as well as trombone player, explains what keeps the musicians coming back. Oh, I love to play music. I play in other bands. Uh, you work all week, and then this band rehearses on Friday night, and it's a great release to uh, come out to rehearsal on Friday night. You're not going to find a better group, of, find a group of people, and um, and they are from all walks of life, you know. There's a lot of people do all kinds of different things, but we all uh, gather in the same interest to, to play and to have a good time. And I, I think that's what probably continues me to, you know, come back. So, how did you do on the history quiz? Stella B. Werner, the first woman president of the Montgomery County Council, did many things for this county. As you heard in today's show, she helped organize the Bethesda USO during World War II. In the 40s, she headed the county's first charter commission, creating the constitutional framework for our county government. And she was a member of the county's press association and hosted a radio show on WBCC in Bethesda. Well, that's all the time we have for this show. If you have comments for us or ideas for future shows, send an email to paths.present at verizon.net. Be sure and tune in again next time when we follow more paths to the present. See you then.